Hey folks, and welcome to another edition of Standard Spike. Uh, this week I don't actually have Modern for you. I have Popper, which is a format that I've only just gotten into. But I've learned a lot so far, and I've also learned a lot about this deck, which I'll be talking about in just a second. Uh, the format is moderately fun, I'd say. Um, it's very polarized in that a lot of the decks win as early as turn 2-3, to three, which would be Infect and Storm. And a deck like this that wins on turn 20 or so. Um, so it's kind of an interesting format. Um, so this is the deck I'll be playing, and I'm going to quickly try to make it quick. I'll go over the cards in the deck and uh, the reason for each one. Uh, if you don't want to watch the deck deck, you can go ahead and continue on to the matches. Um, so this is blue red post. So pretty simply, we have our eight posts. We have uh, six and nine for our basics. Uh, 23 lands seems like a uh, too few for a deck like this, but we have a ton of cantrips and a few other mana sources as well, uh, like the prisms, signet maps, um, and then you know cantrips. It's uh, galore. So 23 is actually just fine. Uh, so for our cantrips or card draw, we have three three state oracles, one mnemonic wall, and four mold drifter. Uh, mnemonic wall is not exactly a cantrip. It's actually a huge en a, a huge engine and a big part of the deck. Uh, it works well with uh, where's that card? This one and capsize as well. Um, and we'll get to those at the very end. Uh, Seagate Oracle is my my uh, cantrip of choice over compulsive research because the body is actually quite relevant in this format, and also it's easier to justify this card if I have this card in the deck. Um, Compulsive is a lot better against the decks that aren't attacking you, but it's a lot worse against the decks that are. So I've I've hedged for the decks that are, because I think uh, in those matchups it's more important to have a body. Uh, and then Ford Moldrifter, just the best card draw spell there is at common, and you know it's really good, just at any rarity. Um, for Prophetic Prism helps us cast spells easier with all of our Locust lands. Uh, better than a Signet in my opinion because. Usually we get pretty high on mana, but uh, um, but we would rather just have the cantrip than the like signet ability. Um, I do have one signet anyways because like having one you can't like go wrong. Like sometimes you have to add both colors. Sometimes you just want to ramp from two to four or etc. Um, so I think having one of those is actually fine, but not really like I don't really want a lot of them. Uh, three maps, which is more than most versions play. Uh, I just think it's too key for, uh, as a part of the deck to play less than three. I was playing four, but that was actually a bit too many. Uh, three Mystical Teachings, which is one more than most decks play. Uh, it's a big part of the deck because Capsize is the primary win condition, and then you do have all these other cards and specific targets for Mystical Teachings, so it's a really big part of the deck. Uh, Brainstorm uh, is our uh, instant speed card draw of choice. A lot of versions play Mysteries of the Deep, which is just a five mana draw three basically at sorcery speed. Um, I find that card to be pretty poor. Five mana is a lot. And even though you just played teachings most likely, I'd still rather just have the brainstorm at one mana. Uh, get, it lets you do something entirely different with your turn than just draw three cards, but it still does draw you three cards. Um, sometimes it doesn't actually draw you all those cards, but that doesn't really matter as much because it costs one mana. That's just way more important. And we do have plenty of shuffle effects. We have maps. Uh, we have Secret Oracle, which kind of counts, and we have Preordain, and and Mystical Teachings, and the flashback on that. So you can you can tutor for it, cast it, then flash it back later before you draw the two cards, preferably. Um, yeah, for Preordain, just the best uh, one mana cantrip, better than Ponder because we don't have enough fast shuffle effects like fetch lands. Um, yep, just just the best. And our counterspell package, we have a single hard counter and counterspell because that one is kind of hard to cast, but we do want to have one main deck so that we can tutor for it when we are uh, feel like we're the game is just about locked up, but we need to have that counter backup. Prohibit, I think, is the best possible uh, cheap counter spell in this deck. Other options are Condescend, Mana Leak, Miscalculation, and I think there's one more, but I'm not, I don't know if I can remember right now. But Prohibit is the best because it's still a hard counter, and it's still active later on in the game, Whereas Condescend and Mana Leak and Miscalculation, those all get really bad. Even though we're adding a ton of mana, it's still really bad to have to have like five or more mana open to counter a spell. And against Storm and uh, 
what's the other one? The mirror match. Storm and the mirror match. Condescend and Mana Lake are just really, really bad. Sometimes they don't counter anything. Um, and I think Prohibit is just actually perfect for that job. And it's been really good so far. Um, four Firebolts, our Burn Package. I think Firebolt is the best. There's tons of different options in this slot. Uh, Flame Slash, Lightning Bolt, uh, Stagger Shock, Harvest Pyre. Uh, I could go on. Elect electrostatic Bolt, Magma, uh, Magma Spray. I prefer Firebolt to the full set because it's a two for one. Uh, it deals damage to the dome and deals the most max damage as well. Like Flame Slash could deal four damage, but this deals two damage. Couldn't it can deal four damage? It, it's a two for one. It's is the best. Uh, second to that, I have Lightning Bolt as a tutor target. I think this is the second best to Firebolt because the instant speed is the next most important thing. Um, I I would play more of these before I went with anything else. <clears throat> Seismic Shutter is, has a very specific job. It answers Empty the Warrens and a, a number of different things from a lot of aggro decks. Uh, Solano Ledgewalker. There's just a bunch of X1s floating around in these decks. Um, Slivers is a deck. So it's a really good card to have at least one copy of main deck. And I could actually see myself boarding a second copy. Uh, and then here we get to the win conditions. Capsize is the main win condition because you can tutor for it. It doesn't actually win you the game, but, but it puts you in a position where you can't lose. So uh, that's what it's there for. Uh, Crusher is the actual card that kills them. Uh, it seems kind of random to have one copy of that when you can't tutor for it. But it actually works just fine because like, it, it's like as soon as you can cast it, it's going to win you the game almost every time. So... The fact that it only costs 8 in comparison to Rolling Thunder, which to win the game costs you like 30 mana sometimes, is just really good. And the fact that it also has a body is also really relevant. Um, then we have Ghostly Flicker, uh, which is really good with the wall. And it's also just really good in general, like uh, just marginally good with Glimmer Post, Moldrifter, Seagate Oracle, Prophetic Prism. Uh, just a nice card to have one copy of. Um, and then also you'll see the lack of Rolling Thunder, which is which is in almost every blue-red post deck I see. But in my opinion, it's not actually very good. As a win condition, it's fine, but usually you're going to win games that you could dome them for 20 or more anyways. And when you're killing creatures with it, it's just a really, really bad removal spell. It costs a lot of mana. Like If you kill a bunch of creatures with it, it's fine, but that almost never happens. Um, so that's the main deck. For the sideboard, we have Earth Rift, which is mostly just for the mirror match. It's definitely the best card for the for that job. Like Stone Rain, costing one less is not really relevant in my opinion in comparison to having Flashback. Uh, Echoing Truth, kind of another answer for Empty the Warrens, but uh, I think it could just do better as a, another Seismic Shutter or, or whatever else. It's just an open slot. Um, I, th I actually thought I wanted it, but now I'm not I'm not so sure. Envelop and Pyroblast are are our one mana counter spells a lot of decks play a mixture of hydroblast and pyroblast which i really don't like they feel too too random to me like sometimes they just don't work for the job so instead i have one pyroblast which is so that i can teach us for a counter spell and uh have just mountain open and be able to counter something envelop for mostly for storm because uh, the, mo the more important cards they have are usually sorceries but it also is good in the mirror match it, it hits a uh, earth rift and uh, a few other things, but mostly it's the Earth Rift counter spell for one mana. Um, we have Flame Slash as extra removal for some matchups. Uh, Stagger Shock also in that role. It's a good tutor target too. Um, Serrated Arrows, another card for that job. This one I think is the best, but it's also the, the most expensive, which is really important that you have the cheapest removal possible most of the time because you don't want to die uh, quickly. Because if you can get stable, then you're usually in really good shape. Uh, but this card is just really good at killing uh, multiple creatures. It's pro I think it's better than Stagger Shock. definitely is. But the fact that it costs one more and can't be tutored for makes it kind of weak. That's actually also the reason I don't have a main deck. It's a really narrow removal spell, and the fact that uh, it's really expensive is not where you want your removal to be. So it's not good enough for the main deck, in my opinion. Uh, and then lastly, we have 3 Negate. <coughs> which are the least narrow counterspell we could have access to. Um, and I'll, Well, besides counterspell, but we can't really afford to play a bunch of counterspells. We just can't cast them. So this is the next best thing. And I think it's much better than having like a mixture of one-man counterspells, just because it's it's so broad. 
Uh, so that's the deck, and let's go ahead and get started.